Welcome to the Ultimate Beginner Quilt Series by Fat Quarter Shop. In this series, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a quilt all the way from the start to the finish. This series is sponsored by Moda Fabrics and Eversung Sewing Machines. I'm gonna be giving you lots of tips and we're gonna be building our first quilt together. In this video, we're making block three from the Ultimate Beginner Quilt Series. This is called a picture window block, and on this video, we're gonna talk a lot about pinning and cutting. So I have a lot to teach you today. Let's get started. So the first step is to take your pattern, you can download it in the description box, and really just kind of review everything. Look at your cutting and your assembly to get familiar with it. That's what I do with all my patterns before I cut and really think through what you're cutting. So on A, we need a four and a half inch square. On B, we need two rectangles. And C, we need two other rectangles. And then D and E are also rectangles. So I'm gonna start with the yellow. So I'll place my aqua to the side. And I think what I would like to do here is cut my strips first and do my square last. So I think that that would take three two and a half inch strips to start. So that's where I'm gonna start. So again, I'm gonna just clean up the edge, get a straight cut, and I'm gonna cut two and a half. And then two and a half plus two and a half is five. And then I'm gonna just cut those two to start and then come back and finish. So I'm gonna subcut these individually. So for C, I need two eight and a half inch rectangles. So I'm gonna start there. So again, line up your ruler and trim and then we'll turn our ruler we need two eight and a half inch rectangles so you're going to use the other side of your rect of your ruler and you're going to trim And when I'm lining it up, I'm lining up this line and this line. So those will be my C's. So I'm gonna go ahead, put this on my design board and label it as a C with my alpha bitties so that I can, this design board is portable so you can take it with you as you go to the sewing machine. And now we need two 12 and a half inch rectangles across the two and a half. So I'm gonna do a 12 and a half, trim, to, trim that so that I have a straight edge. And again, I'm gonna use my 12 and a half inch line on my ruler. You're gonna always wanna cut with a ruler as a measurement instead of your mat. Okay, this will be B. Put this on my design board. And now I need one more two and a half inch strip but we also need a square. So I'm gonna make sure that I have enough. I've got a two and a half, and then I would definitely have enough for four and a half. So I'm gonna do a two and a half inch square rectangle. One more, and that, that's just a way for me to think through everything as I cut, take my time, so that I don't um, cut into fabric that I might need a bigger piece from. So again, 12 and a half and use your ruler to measure. And then I need a four and a half inch square. But on this, I don't want to cut the whole strip. So I'm just gonna cut from this little section that's left over. So the first thing I will do is put 
the top of my ruler on this line and make sure I've got enough four and a half and then I've got salvage left over. So that means I'm gonna get a big enough piece. We're gonna save this. And then you can just turn your fabric and each time line, line it up on the four and a half. So I've lined it up on the top and the side, we're gonna trim and rotate one more time and that gives you a four and a half inch square. And that will be our fabric A. So now we have our yellow done and we're gonna move to D and E. For D we need two two and a half by eight and a half inch rectangles and two two and a half by four and a half inch rectangles for E. So I can probably get that from two strips because I've got 20 inches wide. So you just want to think through your cuts. So eight and a half plus eight and a half is 17. So we can get two strips from one and four and a half, we can get two strips from the other. So we're going to cut two, two and a half inch strips. So it's good to kind of think through it. And if you need to, you can always get a piece of paper and just draw out your dimensions. You can draw out, okay, I have 14 inches this way, 20 inches this way, and then you can draw your pieces before you cut if you're a beginner, and that way it really visually will help, help you in your mind before you cut. And again, we're gonna get a straight edge. And this time, I'm gonna do it a little bit different. This is how I usually do it. I'm gonna first cut at the five inches. Set this aside, move my ruler back, and I will have two and a half inches. Now we can rotate this, and we're going to cut two eight and a half inch rectangles. So again, line this up, do a straightening edge. And on the salvage, I make sure all the dots are gone. And we're going to use our ruler and measure eight and a half. And I really take my time to make sure everything is lined up. The more accurate you cut, the more accurate your block will be. So these will be my D's. And for E, we need two four and a half inch rectangles. So again, a straightening cut, line this up and cut. And then we're gonna do two four and a half. Now this time, since four and a half, you can measure it either this way or this way. So I'm gonna just use this way because it's a little bit easier, but either side would be fine. Cut that. And that. And now we have everything on our design board and nice and cut. So now what I like to do is pin when I'm at my cutting station and then it's all ready to pin when I get to my sewing machine. So our first step is we're gonna take two fabric E rectangles and put the fabric A square in the center. And I'm gonna go ahead, put the fabrics right sides together. We're going to pin at the very top. You wanna make sure your fabric is nice and lined up pin at the very bottom and again just make sure everything is nice and lined up and you can put one pin in the center and then we'll do th the same thing on the other side each side and in the center and everybody who pins pins a different way I like to pin slightly to the side or up and down you can pin any way that is most comfortable for you 
And now we're going to go to our sewing machine and stitch a quarter inch down. When you're stitching, you will want to make sure the edge of your foot is right on the edge. If you put it too far on this side, your seam will be too small. And if you put it too far on this side, your seam will be too big. So you put it right on the edge and we're going to stitch all the way down. You want to line the edge of your fabric right on the edge of your foot. So now we have this stitched and we are going to press away from the center throughout this entire pattern and you want to set your seam. That just means place the iron flat on your seam. I will finger press to one side. I'll do one side at a time. Put the edge of my iron right on the edge. Let it sit there. Do the same thing on the other side. Finger press and iron. I like to use steam. My seams are nice and flat. What you don't want to do is this. It will stretch your fabric. So it's, it's nice and flat. We'll bring our design board over and we are going to be building our block. And D is going to go on the very top and bottom. So what I will do, same thing. pin at the left and the right and you just always want to make sure that you've got your corner nice and pinned even. So you don't want to pin right here like if we pinned right here it wouldn't be even so if you pin at the beginning and the any the beginning and the end you can ease all your fabric in. So then you just pull it. I'm going to pin once in the center two more times around that's just going to ease your fabric right in. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. So however you pin is how it's going to come out. So if you pin out here, then you're going to be too long. So you just want to get right in that corner. I like to use really tiny pins, but if you're a beginner, you might want to use thicker pins. It's all personal preference. Use whatever you like best pin in the center and pin twice and then we're going to do the same thing with our sewing machine foot and a quarter inch seam and we're going to sew these seams. So again line your foot right on the edge of the fabric. Remove your pins as you get close to them. So now we're just going to iron. So again, I'm going to set my seams nice and flat on both sides, pressing away from the center. This block is a variation of the courthouse steps. 
very beginner friendly block finger press and if you press down right now you will get creases but if you put if you put your iron just flat you're gonna get a crease so if you put your iron the edge and push right on that seam away you will have nice flat seams and now we're gonna lay this down and we are going to add fabric C's to the edge and when we do that your block is going to look better if it's laid this way. You could lay it this way, but it just won't look as good. So we're going to lay it this way and we're gonna pin top and bottom, center and two pins between. And we're gonna be doing the same technique. And you can see like it's going all the way to the edge. You just want to move it and that's totally normal for it to do that. And then just ease it in. We're just going to ease that in. And we're going to go to our sewing machine and stitch down these edges. we can go press. We're almost done building our block. Again, just set your seam and press. And the great thing about this block and this style of block for beginners is there are no seams to match up. All you have to do is really pin as you go. And so if you're a beginner and you don't want to worry about points, your very next quilt, you could do something similar to this and you won't have to worry about matching all those seams. And so we just have our final two fabric bees. Same thing. And if you were doing a quilt with just this block, you could chain piece as you go and it would be a lot quicker for you. Now on this one, we've got a little bit longer, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a few more pins, two more pins. Pinning, some people don't like to pin, but pinning is gonna give you a more accurate result. And in the end, you will have to seam rip a lot less, which saves time.
have everything sewn. Such an easy block. We're just pressing these last little bits. And I'm loving this yellow and blue together. It's a really nice combo. And if you wanted to, you could actually use three fabrics for this. You could do a different center, middle, and outer if you wanted to have fun and do three colors instead of two. So it gives you a little bit of flexibility. And now we're just gonna trim the little slivers off the edge of our block. So this very last step is totally optional. I like to just trim the little, I call it the slivers off the edge. You don't have to do this. Um, it's just like a little finishing step. It's just gonna take the very tiny leftover threads off and it's gonna square it up a tiny bit. You don't have to do this, but I just really like to. Gives it a nice finish. And this one, you can see how this little seam came out a tiny bit, but I'm lining up my ruler right on this, trimming, and that's just gonna make it square. Just tiny, tiny, tiny bit off. And it kind of accounts for if your seam gets off a little funny. It just makes it nice and square. So this is block three. It's magnificent. I'm loving it. We also have block two, which was our nine patch. And we also have our stripe block, which was block one. And if you're sewing along, that means that all of your blocks in row one are done. So you can feel a huge accomplishment that you have that first row done. And I'm loving everything that I'm seeing that you're sewing. And I'm so proud of all of you. Everything's looking great. And I can't wait to see you next week for block four.